to uh, the vibrancy of uh, this historic neighborhood and those who continue to do so today. Uh, Pixie Liao's exhibition, Experimental Relationship for Your Eyes, for your eyes Only, or maybe mine too, at Center A is Pixie Liao's first solo exhibition in um, Canada. Uh, as part of the 2020 Capture Photography, Photography Festival uh, selected uh, exhibition program and supported by uh, Tricera Print Grant. Um, this online, uh, this online uh, artist talk is presented in partnership with the David Lamb Center and at um, Simon Fraser University. Uh, we are also uh, grateful for uh, the generous support of the Canada Council for the Arts, the, the British Columbia Arts Council, the Government of British Columbia, the City of Vancouver, and all of our funders, donors, and our superstars, uh, volunteers. Um, I also uh, just want to quickly uh, give the mic to uh, my colleague, my, uh, our curatorial assistant, Hannah Amani, which is the window next to me, uh, to speak a few words before I introduce uh, Pixie to all of you. Yes, thank you, Henry, and thank you, Pixie. It has been an amazing collaboration making this artist talk happen. It's actually almost a month since today when we were putting up the show at the Sanwa Center in Center A. And despite COVID, we're all here at this very exciting online artist talk, which is the first online artist talk at Center A. So I'm very happy to be sharing this moment with all of you who have tuned in from all over the world. And thank you. Thank you so much, Hannah. Uh, so I would like to um, introduce Pixie to everyone. So born in Shanghai, Pixie Liao is a multidisciplinary artist based in New York who works with various mediums, uh, including photography, installation, and performance. Uh, Pixie is known for staged photography where she posts with her boyfriend turned muse, uh, Moro. Her works challenge um, traditional gender roles within heterosexual relationships, uh, humorously revealing a multitude of ways of being together. Um, and it's very uncanny for us at Center A to consider uh, during the COVID situation how uh, we have moved the exhibition online, uh, where you can see at uh, centera.org um, slash pixie dash pix, um, pixie dash liao dash uh, online um, to consider uh, the ways we uh, interact with uh, each other and how to um, to live together uh, in this very surreal uh, and extraordinary time. Uh, Pixie is a recipient of the NYFA Fellowship in Photography, Sento Foundation Individual Artist Awards, uh, GMA and uh, ARNS, uh, International Photo Festival, Madame uh, Figaro Women Photographies Award, um, and Focus New Works Fellowship and Lens Culture Exposure Awards and so on. She has participated in artist residency at the University of Arts London, School of Visual Arts, uh, Pioneer Works, Light Work, Lower Manhattan Cultural uh, Council Center for uh, Photography at Woodstock and Camera Club of New York. Uh, Pixie has uh, also participated in exhibitions and performances in institutions internationally, uh, including the UCCA Center for Contemporary Art in Beijing, uh, He Xiangning Museum in Shenzhen, uh, China, the Museum of Sex in New York, uh, Asia uh, Society in Houston, Open Eye Gallery in uh, UK, and Chambers Fine Arts in New York, and also First Draft Gallery in Sydney, Australia. Uh, Pixie holds uh, an MFA in photography from the University of Memphis. Um, and I'm really happy to uh, welcome all of you from uh, outside of Vancouver and also Canada to join us for uh, this event uh, today. And I just want to uh, quickly introduce Center A a little bit. Uh, if you are uh, not familiar with um, who we are. So Center A, uh, Vancouver International Center for Contemporary Asian Art is the only public art gallery in Canada dedicated to contemporary Asian and Asian diasporic perspectives since 1999. Uh, we're committed to pr providing a platform 
for uh, engaging diverse communities through uh, public access to the arts, creating mentorship um, opportunities for uh, emerging artists uh, and arts professionals, and stimulating creative uh, and critical dialogue through uh, provocative exhibitions and innovative public programs that uh, complicate uh, understandings of um, uh, diasporic uh, experiences uh, in the communities. Um, Century's programming has been rooted in a curiosity about uh, and also an uh, ongoing exploration of, of uh, what a contemporary Asian art center can do in the current times. Uh, so, um, before I uh, give the mic to uh, Pixie, I also want to let everybody know there will be a Q&A uh, after uh, Pixie's um, presentation. And uh, I will give you more details in terms of how to participate because there are multiple ways. And uh, I want to make sure people have time to, uh, to chat with us and then stay with us. Uh, so yeah, so hello Pixie, how are you? Hey everybody. Hello. Oh, I just have one uh, last uh, quick thing is that uh, th this uh, event is being recorded and uh, at the Q&A section, if uh, you uh, do not wish to be uh, recorded, please let us know and then we will make sure that uh, it's not uh, in the video uh, because after the event, we hope to upload this to our Vimeo channel. Um, and also this is uh, streamed uh, uh, live on YouTube as well. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Um, hello, everyone. Um, so nice to see all of you here. And I am talking to you in my apartment in Brooklyn right now. Um, and uh, thank you, uh, Center A, for giving me this opportunity to have my first uh, like online public talk, which is kind of really weird. But um, I think um, being this um, kind of very strange time of the COVID-19, like everybody is quarantined at home. And um, I just hope like all of you are staying safe and healthy at your home right now. And even though um, I have this um, solo show at Center A and I cannot personally go to visit it, it's such a regret, but um, because of that, that I have this online talk and I, I can see like there's a lot of my friends actually in in this meeting room right now and friends that I might otherwise might not be able to see in like a real life or like uh, new people that I've never met. So I think even if it's um, at such a difficult time, there's always a bright side of it. Um, and um, today I'm gonna share with you um, some of my artwork. Uh, let me um, go share my screen right now. And I have a keynote. All right. So um, this, um, the image, this is my real show in Vancouver at Center A right now. And um, Henry, um, he wrote this very beautiful text wall for my exhibition, I really love it. Um, and um, the show is called Experimental Relationship, For Your Eyes Only, or maybe mine too. And uh, the exhibition um, includes um, um, some photo from my, my two photo project. Um, both experimental relationship and also for your eyes only. It also included um, uh, three videos um, of, uh, and also uh, a, a little book that I made. So I'm gonna just um, you know, um, tell you a little bit of my story. So in the beginning, I, I grew up in Shanghai in China and um, I went to Memphis uh, for grad school. And the reason I went to Memphis was um, really random because I know Elvis there and I really like musicians. So I imagine Memphis is a very great city to go to is to find like lots of musicians. So I just went there. 
to study photography. So this is me um, and I'm on the View Street, which is like uh, the, the most popular uh, or the only <laughs> popular street um, in downtown um, in Memphis. There's a lot of like music bars there. Um, and, um, and Memphis is a, such a different place than where I grew up. It's, um, I grew up in Shanghai, um, like a, a city with tall buildings. But when I went to Memphis, it's like completely different worlds of different landscape, different people. Um, and I was immediately uh, attracted to it because of the um, kind of very free and natural and style and also the bold colors they use in the rooms. And I, you know, just start to trying to find my way there in Memphis. Um, and this is one of the self portrait I did at this time. And it goes into the main story right now. This is a story about how I met um, the man of my life and also the muse of my career, um, Morrow, and how I captured him. <laughs> um, so um, I went to Memphis in 2005 and this is, I think, the very first photo I took of Morrow in 2006. I actually met him on the first day I went to school in 2005, but we didn't talk at the time. It was an international student orientation. And he introduced himself to us. He said, oh, I'm, um, I'm, a mus I'm here to study music. And somehow he left a, a impression on me. I think, oh, this, this, uh, he's quite handsome and he's very skinny and he's a musician. It's like, they all kind of match my type. So I have an impression of him. So a year later, I ran into him um, on the campus. I just remember, oh, that's the boy that I saw. So I just walk up to him and say, um, would, would you like to be my model? I'm a photographer. I mean, I actually, I was just really happy to see him. So that's how we met. And um, we actually started um, our relationship um, with photography in the very beginning. And um, soon I start to like using all kinds of photo assignment skills to meet him. So then we start dating. And then um, Marald, he, he is very um, a kind of different type of boyfriend, I would say. Um, he, he looks very cool. But when you saw him, he's a little scary. Um, but when you actually get to know him, he's very tender and sensitive. And also he's very um, into visual art and contemporary art. He's very open-minded. So um, not only he's a very um, willing boyfriend, he's also a very good collaborator, I would say. He always liked to help me with all my photo assignments. So at the, at the time I asked him to model for me for my photo class. Um, and I have one of the idea that I want to take a series of photo of murder scene. So I just asked Mara, oh, Mara, why don't you just, you know, get naked, you know, play a dead body in my photograph. So he did it. Um, in some of photos, he's like in those compromising poles. So I was showing these photos to um, my classmate and my teachers. And they're very surprised, not by my photo, but by how collaborative um, my boyfriend is or how supportive he is and or whether I am treating him really bad. So that kind of um, make me first time realize that uh, our relationship, which I think is quite natural, that he is very collaborative in helping me with all the photos. In other people's mind, this is not usually what a boyfriend would be willing to do. Um, so I started to think maybe I should just take a picture of us, like just to show our relationship because I do find him different than my other boyfriend. Not only he listens to me, he is very willing to help me and collaborate. 
with my photos. So I start to make photos of us. This is probably the very first photo of my project. Um, so in the photo, I was like choking him and also kissing him at the same time. And these are all very early photographs that I took in our um, student apartment at the time. And um, this um, relationship works best when each partner knows their proper place, which I took in 2008. I would say this photo is probably um, the photo that makes me have a kind of more clear um, idea of what, which direction my project's gonna go. In this photograph, you was you notice like Morris holding a a cable release, a, a a string coming out of his hand. This is the um, equipment we use for controlling the um, film camera. So when he squeezes the ball, the camera is gonna click and take the picture. The reason why I give him this in the first place is because. Uh, my hand power is not strong enough to squeeze it. So if I will have to take the picture, my facial expression is gonna be ruined. I cannot let that happen, so I give it to him. But when I see this photograph, um, the thing is I am like pinching his nipples and he's clicking the shutter and the cable just extends outside the photograph. It kind of tells me there's a, connection going in between this image like from me to him to the cable release and it goes out to the audience i think the cable release is a, a sign a, a clue of the photograph and also it's a sign of control i mean i'm having control of this whole photograph but at the same time he has his control of the moment exact moment so after that i never trying to hide the cable release in my Later photo I'm gonna show you, you can always try to find where it is, who's holding it. So I think it's a very interesting clue that I leave. And a little note about where I got this idea of this photograph is obviously from um, this very famous French painting. And um, it's not really because I have studied this painting or anything, it was just, I think I saw it when I was a teenage girl and I was super um, interested in this photograph just because like the the fact that she's pinching another woman's nipple i think it's, it's such an inappropriate thing that you can do to another person but at the same time it is very fun to do and and i did a little research later on the the reason why she's pinching her nipple is this painting is trying to indicate that the woman being pinched is pregnant with the the king's baby so there's a little clue in this. So I think like for me, this is also a clue of me trying to tell you something through this um, little gesture. And um, another photo I took, um, every man needs a woman to keep him on the track. So this photo is also from another image I saw when I was young, um, this um, Rolling Stone cover of Jenny Jackson and uh, you know when i was a teenage girl i saw this photo when i was in china i was like wow this is like i cannot imagine this kind of photo can be published on uh, and it's so brave and at the same time it's it's little uh, make me uncomfortable because i'm a woman too so i think um when i start to do this project i start to think oh how i can um make a response to those images which give me very deep impressions so i also took another picture to go with this one so these two are supposed to see together so in the front is like every man is the woman to keep him on track and then i turn to the side i told you so that's revealing who's behind um, and this is how to build a relationship with layer meanings. Again, this is in our apartment. 
um, in Memphis and we have this really crappy mattress that we sleep on. And when I see the mattress and also my experience with him in the beginning, he always remind me um, the story of Princess on the Pea. You know, the princess is so sensitive, like even tiny the pea can make her uncomfortable. And sometimes I feel like I am the tiny little pea that makes him uncomfortable. And sometimes I also feel like, oh, um, he, he makes me feel like he's a princess and I have to be a knight to protect him. So that's the why I took this picture. And one interesting thing about this photograph is when I was taking the picture, I was imagining, um, because we are both Asian, we are both naked, short hair, I would imagine we're lying on top of each other, we're gonna look similar. People cannot tell who is who. But when I see the photos, it's um, teaching me something like men and women, they still look so different, even though you try to show the bare minimum, you know, how similar you are, but actually we are still different. And then 2009, we moved to, we both graduated, we moved to um, New York. This is our first apartment in Bushwick. And this is like um, um, half basement. So the only place I can take picture is the kitchen. It has really great window light. So I took a, a, a bunch of photos in the kitchen. And this one photo, um, live like a pair of Siamese twins is uh, really about my idea of a of, of couple. And I really think a couple, uh, to be a good couple, um, the two person have to be acting almost as one unit. So this is one of the photo I took. And this is another photo I took in the kitchen. Because start your day with a good breakfast together and I mean, um, I really enjoy making this photo, but this photo turns out to be his least favorite photograph. But the reason why you think he doesn't like this photo um, is very different between <laughs> um, his own reason. So his reason why he doesn't like it is because he thinks he doesn't have a good hairstyle that day. And I think I didn't have a good hairstyle that day too. I mean, I agree. But I think that it's the thing that makes this project possible is Morrow's um, personality. He has his own idea of how he should be. He does not care about what other people think he should be. So because he's so true to himself that enables me to find um, more potentials that we can make images together. Um, and this is um, some words that just between us. Uh, um, this is like the, the second part when we had in Brooklyn um, in 2010. And we have a very beautiful skylight. And at a time, this is a, one of the very dark image that I have. Usually my image is very bright, very colorful. But this dark image was because at a time I already take um, many photos for experimental relationship. And I was looking back at all the photos and I was thinking maybe I was being too overpowering. And I wonder how that's gonna affect um, him and how it's gonna affect our relationship. So it, there's a lot of like doubt and dark negative thoughts at a time. So I think that kind of shows in this photograph. And then I go, I get over it. Um, this is homemade sushi. And it was um, uh, because I, I really um, kind of fascinated by the a trend in Japan of eating sushi from naked female bodies. So thinking, oh, why do I just make a sushi at home? And this is Moro by the pound. Um, this is um, was taken in Woodstock when I was having my first artist residency. 
and it's a very rare chance for me to have access um, to the nature. And I took um, a same location of another image, which um, this image was um, in the show in Center A right now. And thanks to Harry, because otherwise I don't think I'll ever show this photograph before. Um, and this is also in Woodstock. And the king under me. The king under me, this is, um, I think, um, comes from a Chinese saying, like, if you are the, um, if you are the king and your, your queen will be just under you, but above everybody else. So in my case, um, he is the king under me. And um, in 2013, around that time, I was trying to think, I kind of get bored of my old composition because my old composition is all full body, half body, like just two of us doing things. And I want to do something more close up in the compositions, be more about the colors and the shapes. Um, and that leads to another project that I'm gonna show you later. Um, it's never been easy to carry you. Um, in this image, you see on the top of the image, this. Um, a lot of white space and in my original idea I would like my composition like my head is going to be much higher in the image but when I was taking the picture more is very happy like we were actually just on the couch behind me and he's so happy he kept pushing me down so when I saw the image scanned I was very um, disappointed because I was much lower than I expected to be and then it took me a while to realize the reason why I'm lower in the image is actually because he's heavy. And that's the truth about this photograph is also sometimes it talks about like um, kind of similar feeling that I have um, this kind of feeling of burden in a relationship. Like even though I like to imagine myself as a very strong, powerful woman, but actually sometimes you realize I do feel it's very heavy. So after I realized that, even though this image was not what I wanted to be, I think this image is better because it's more true to life. And in 2015, I had a residency in Lightwalk and in Syracuse, New York. And this is the place we lived in. It was like a apartment converted from um, a school. And we took some photos there. And this photo was um, also inspired by another painting, um, Frida Kahlo's The Two Fridas. Um, like when I saw the red strings, I just, automatic think about this image and I oh, just want to try to make an image with that. And this is um, some photos I took in Moro's hometown. This is actually his home. Like they have this traditional Japanese room in his home. And I took some photos there. And this is also in Japan in um, Airbnb. And this, this photo is actually taken by Morris' mom. And I think the only photo in my project which is taken by a third person. Um, this long sausage um, photo actually comes from another project I collaborated with Morrow. So the the pink thing you see is uh, supposed to be a penis. I was imagining like if I can have a penis so long that can wrap around my belt, like my waist would be so fun. So I asked him to make a um, penis. So I, I have a, a project with him, which I did in 2013. So the, the piece is called a collection of penises. 
and say, I want to have a collection of penises. I want Mara to make them for me. And Mara has the um, control of what shape, like um, the size, like he, he can make up his own mind, like all the shape he come up with is his own. Uh, what I'm providing him is only the, the pink, pink fabric and also the cotton filling. So all these penises, they're different shapes, different sizes, but they're all pink and they're very soft. So this is um, one of the projects uh, we collaborate uh, outside the photograph. Um, this was taken in one of a friend's apartment in Copenhagen. And, um, and we're just really proud that um, I used to be this girl that who cannot even click the cable release. But now after years of gym training, I can finally lift him up. So I was very proud of myself. And this photo is, I took in, also in Japan on a mountain, I found an old hotel and I, the old hotel just looks so beautiful. Look, remind me of Japanese film. And I'm actually very interested in one genre of Japanese film called Pinky Violence. So those films are all um, Yakuza film, mafia film. But the difference is their main characters are always women. And one of the film, poster I really like is this one. This is like um, like very typical pinky violence um, female characters. They usually dress up in like um, very traditional beautiful kimono but they're like showing half of their shoulders and they're like usually like holding a weapon or something. So in my case I, I just change it to a cable release because now I have the power to actually squeeze it. And then this was um, last year when I was in Italy and I found an apartment with the stairs and I just wanted to do this um, photograph because um, obviously there was many people did um, um, female um, on a staircase before me. This is also in Italy. And, and that's, I'm just going to my other part for your eyes only very quickly. So because of, um, like I said, I, I was kind of bored with my old composition of full body. I want to do it very close up. And also I think a lot of people respond to my last project based on their own, um, um, <laughs> Based their own like uh, uh, ideas about the very specific relationship I have with Moro, so whether they like the relationship or not will decide whether they like the project or not. So I want to do some photo projects that people don't need to think too much; they can just respond directly to the image itself. But at the same time, I try to keep the same kind of playful attitude in the photograph as well. And um, there's two, some other photo um, projects I did outside of um, this um, uh, photograph is um, one I made a, a Pimo dictionary. So because he's Japanese and I'm Chinese, we communicate with each other with, in English. And our English is not good enough to completely communicate with each other. So we added in um, Japanese and a little bit Chinese into our vocabulary. And uh, we have some special words that have a special meaning. So we collect all of them together in a Google document and then I put them into a dictionary. And this is um, another sculpture that I made called uh, Soft Heel Shoes. Um, so the one on the bottom is the shoes, actual shoes. And the one on the top is actually the, um, a photograph. But the photograph is um, 
a cast of penis which I used for modeling the the shoes heels. Um, the reason why I did it is because I when I was like doing um, I had a job in big company and I was required to wear high heel shoes. I really hate it and I, I cannot rem imagine how can I like like very high heel shoes and I think maybe the only way I can enjoy wearing high heel shoes is the high heels made of a soft penis and bouncing balls so every time I walk it's gonna be bending and also the ball is gonna be bouncing and um, then I had access to a 3d printing lab and they print soft materials and I was like oh this is the moment I can actually finally realizing my dream of having a uh, high heel shoes and I also make a, a sculpture called breast spray and this spray is um, coming, the idea is coming from um, a story I heard online. There's a robbery in Germany and there's a woman, she's trying to rob a, uh, a deli and the way she robbed the deli is very creative. So when the cashier is opening the cashier machine, she suddenly opened her clothes and squeezed her breast and spilled her milk into the cashier's eyes. And the cashier cannot see and she grabbed money and ran away. And I was so amazed by this woman's um, decision. Like she, she has completely changed the function of a breast, which is supposed to be uh, nurturing um, about female beauty into a weapon. So I think I, I kind of really want to make me want to make this half, um, uh, soft, half, half a weaponized thing of this breast spray. And this video is also um, kind of inspired by porn video too. Um, and if you cannot see very clear of, of this video, this video is also on our uh, Center A website for my exhibition. So there's a link on the top, you can go online, the video is listed on the website, okay, you can watch it later. And I um, also made a bag, men's bags. So there's a little clip of me running with a man on my back. And this is one of the latest projects I made, uh, which is part of the uh, my friend's um, gallery project called Flyway Project. So I, I made this um, installation, which you see it looks like very big, but actually um, on the right side, that's where the gallery is. So this is my friend's apartment, the black and white place. And so they have this little space on top of their closet and they decide to make it into a gallery. And they say, hey, Pixie, do you want to do a show in our <laughs> gallery space? I say, cool, yeah. So I made a a temple for her and the temple is actually for um a, one of the only the only female empress in chinese history Wu Zetian. so she was a ruthless woman and she was super powerful in tang dynasty um but she was always portrayed as a evil woman because she is too powerful and these things that King also did, but they think it's fine, but because she's a woman, she did many things that they cannot believe a woman can be so ruthless too. Um, so this is a, a temple I built for her. And on the left side is we moved um, the flyway project from their apartment to a real gallery space in Chambers Fine Art. So that's, um, and last but not least, um, talk a little bit how I collaborate with Moro. So all the works that I show you um, is uh, I collaborate with Moro a lot. And we actually have a band together called Pimo Band. So it's P 
Pixie and Morrow's name together. And we have um, our little Bandcamp website. And in our um, show, we also have um, um, on our um, Center A um, exhibition website, we also have um, included two music video from our band. Um, I mean, you cannot hear the music right now, but if you're interested, I um, recommend you to go to Center A's website and you can see the videos. Um, so I think we're able to hear it. Uh, perhaps we can we can let it run a little bit. <laughs> So that song is talking about um, Mimoku is, which is um, long johns in Shanghai dialect. So it's about like in the winter time, we're all wearing these long johns inside our pants and keep warm. And um, the band is very different. Um, sorry. The band, um, I would say, is mostly led by Mauro. So our roles reversed, and I become the person who's helping him to do the band. And my job in the band is only about singing, and occasionally I write lyrics for her, for the band too. But mostly, like Mauro does everything else. He composes, he writes lyrics. He um, arrange everything, play all the music instruments. So this is um, just another way we collaborate. And I, I like to think the band is a way for me to pay him back and also um, kind of fulfill my um, teenage dream of become a musician myself, which I, that would never happen without, without him. Um, so yeah, that's um, everything I want to share with you guys today. Thank you so much, uh, Pixie. Um, it, was, um, it was very great to, um, to go through some of your past works and also some of the works included in uh, the Century A uh, presentation. Uh, as well. And um, I do want to say that Pixie has a YouTube channel for Pimo Band, and there are a lot of amazing uh, musical works on there that you should definitely check out because when I uh, was first, um, uh, when I was um, doing research and looking at all the Pimo. Uh, works. It, it was quite, uh, uh, it was just really fun and uh, at the same time uh, quite refreshing uh, as well. Um, so I do want to, right now, I want to open the floor to uh, the Q&A. Um, so there are multiple ways to do it. Um, the first way, the first one would be to raise hand and then uh, we will answer questions based on um, uh, the, the, the order. And then the second uh, way to participate is to uh, type your questions in the chat window. Um, and uh, uh, we will try to uh, catch up as, uh, as fast as we can. And then uh, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, I do want to say that um, uh, please, con uh, please uh, consider uh, becoming um, a Center A uh, member uh, by um, making a donation to uh, our um, uh, Can I Helps page, which I will send the link just in the chat window, uh, if you like. And uh, donations with uh, $20 or more will get a text receipt. And um, the first five donors will be able to, each will be uh, able to receive uh, a limited edition uh, Century A 
uh, PCL exhibition postcard. Uh, so I will put a link just over here. Your support is very important for us to, um, very important for us to uh, presenting a program like this and also uh, in this very uh, strange time, how we can uh, find uh, interesting ways to engage with our audiences. So um, I think that we already got some questions here. Um, so the, the first question I see from, uh, is from Michael Pritchard. Uh, the question is, um, will the photo book as a way of sharing work still form part of your future work? Um, I have one photo book which came out 2018 and it was like my almost 10 years photographing to one photo book. Yeah, of course, I'm, and I titled the volume one because I wanted to be other volume coming after that. But I think it's going to be, um, I need to wait for another 10 years maybe to come up with another book because I, I'm not shooting so many a year. So I think I want to kind of give it time and to do it later. But yeah, definitely thinking about it, but not in the near future though. Thank you. And I think that um, Michael actually has another question over here. Um, how much is uh, photography still central to your work as an artist? Hmm. I don't know. Because when I make work, I really don't think about um, the medium that much. I'm more focused about like the idea I have. If the idea can be realized in photograph, then it will be photograph. Um, and but if sometimes like um, the shows that I'm showing, it cannot be realized with photograph. It has to be a sculpture. Then I have to learn some new skills to make it. Um, yeah, and I think. <laughs> Uh, also, because everybody is quarantined at home right now, I really don't think photography is that accessible right now. <laughs> so I think I would try to um, do something other than photography at the moment. Yeah. Um, we have a question from uh, Omer Kaplan. Um, could you speak a little bit about the uh, photographic relationship between you and how does it affect you? Do you feel like is the glue in it? The photograph relationship to me? Um, a little bit about the, the photo uh, photographic relationship between you and how does it affect you? Uh. Mm. I think first of all, I think photography is my first medium because it it kind of fits me. It's very efficient. Then you take a picture, and you you realize your idea very quickly, uh, and also I think it's um it's a good way to uh, see yourself, especially when I'm doing a long term photo project. And um, a lot of time when I see photograph from many years ago, um, it's, uh, it means more to me than an uh, artwork. And sometimes it tells me about how we used to be, um, you know, it tells me about passing time and, you know, and I see my, see ourselves from the past. It's, um, it's kind of um, always reminding me, like, um, you know, who we were and who we are. Like, uh, you know, the time is changing, this kind of thing. I'm not sure I'm answering the question well, so, yeah. So I think there was also a previous question from Carolina, and it's, Pixie, what are you working on now, presently? Presently? I mean, in the beginning, I was so distracted by all this kind of news, this overwhelming. 
and I'm really slow on working things. And I think nowadays I'd rather spend my time to um, actually work on my own body and mind rather than working on my work. Um, like uh, for example, I, I work out every day, try to keep myself healthy and also I try to use this time to um, study something I, or uh, do some research on things that I, I wanted to do but I didn't have the time to do. So I think this is the time I used to kind of build myself rather than actually making work. I feel I'm more inspired when I'm busy. <laughs> when I'm not busy, I'm actually just, you know, staying home. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's been a nice self-care period. And so the next question is from Rafaela. How are you coping with this isolation and quarantine? Have you started any new projects, any new ideas coming from this moment? So I guess it kind of intertwines with the last previous question. Mm. But yeah, like I said, um, it takes time for all of us to get used to it and we don't know when it's gonna, uh, we can come out. And uh, I think we need to think about the changes, like how how we used to be and was that the way we live? Was it like sustainable, you know? And um, I think right now I'm trying to rethink of myself like I, I think I, I used to be too busy like I was always pushed by you know trips or exhibitions or whatever like I didn't really have time to stop for myself to think and somehow I'm taking this time um, I kind of see it as a gift that kind of remind me of when I was young that I I seem to have a lot more time to just to think about myself. And I think this is kind of similar time. Nine. So the next question from Lydia is, do you find any difficulties in the fact that the privacy of your relationship is exposed in such a public arena? Hmm. Uh, I think it's different. I think um, even though people always ask me this question, um, like how will you be comfortable showing your private life in public eyes? But when I'm making a photo work, I'm more, I was just thinking it as an artwork, as an idea. I don't really see it as a real life, even though like it seems like we are in a very intimate setting. So the, the works that I make was meant to be seen by other people. So I, I never have a problem with that. But talking about the public and private, actually, right now, I feel like I'm more shy because like I'm in my living room, <laughs> like talking to um, so many people over internet uh, around the world. And I think that actually made me more shy than showing my work of a uh, naked somehow. <laughs> nice. And so this is a more technical uh, question. And forgive me if I am mispronouncing your name, but from Wang Han. So, so do you add additional lighting in some images, such as by the pond and eating breakfast? And are you always shooting on large format? Um, I actually don't shoot large format. I shoot a small medium format, which is 645 Veronica. This is the same camera when I, I bought when I was um, I just started st study photography. And um, I usually don't have additional lighting, like occasionally maybe one or two photographs in my whole project will have additional lighting, but I try to just use natural light. Um, yeah. Okay, so this is more of a travel showcase question. It's, do you have any plans to show your work, photography or other media in the UK or Europe once lockdown is lifted, of course? Definitely, I want to. I mean, I have shows um, supposed to happen in Europe um, in June, but they're postponed and actually nobody knows when um, will be the appropriate time to have the show again. So I think um, what I miss most 
right now is actually the ability to um, travel um, globally. And I think it's that's such an important part of who we are today then we are so connected um, even though we are like all around the world and so the ability that we can move freely and I, I wish like all of us can do that again soon in the future yeah I think that's what's really cool about this talk there's so many people from all over the world already connecting with you even on this so the next question is from Alex Wong how does your photography motivate or satisfy you does your photography search for the lost part of life or does it motivate you to search for your curiosity in a fantasy world what elements of your pictures satisfy you the most hmm that's a very good question um uh, I think the reason I'm, I make work is what, what I was thinking yesterday, maybe I can call it original pleasure. It's, um, it's something that you like it so much that make you happy. It's like I can still imagine my, my childhood toy, which is like a red shuffle, which my mom always put in a formula can so the the little shuffle was used as a spoon and it smells so good, it smells like milk. And every time I think about that, I feel like I'm so happy just to think about the color, the shape, the smell. So for me, making a work is the same thing. I really enjoy um, to make something that make me happy, to make it come true. And um, I mean, it's, it's a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is I, I enjoy making it. And so that kind of makes the process of making it so, so much easier, so much natural. And the bad thing is um, for me, I'm too objective. So when I see my work, when I choose which one to show, I just remember how I felt when I was making the work so much. So it depends on, do I really enjoy the photo shoot or not? Then I would pick one photo over the other. And sometimes it, it might not be the right decision. So that's when the curator comes to help you to, to choose some photo that, you know, through another person's eye. I think I'm a little like shit getting too far away from the question though. No, I think, uh, I think that's a, good answer and inevitably memory and photography will intertwine and work right so uh, the next question is what is your suggestion to younger photographers mm, I think close to my last answer you need to do something that really make you feel happy or really make you feel like that's what you desire to do instead of what you think is good or what you think other people will accept um, I think um, that's the most important thing, like um, who you are, what you desire, what your true passion is. Um, that's what you should photograph um, instead of trying to make a popular image. Nice. So this is an interesting question too. How did you get comfortable showing your more intimate works and being comfortable photographing your own body? Mm, I think time helps. Um, what I mean is um, I photograph myself. Of course, everybody see their own photograph. They were saying sometimes like, oh, I look kind of ugly in that photograph. Or sometimes, ah, oh, I'm kind of too fat or whatever. You know, there's so many, you're so critical about your own image. But sometimes... If you have those image, it's okay not to show it at that time. But years later, when you look back, you add in the future of time. And then you say, oh, I was so young, you know, even though at the time I didn't think I'm, I was, you know, looking good. But now I think, oh, I was so cute. And then you, you have no problem showing the photo of your past. Um, I think that sometimes that, that will help too. Um, Thank you. Um, we have a question from uh, Morris Lum. Um, the question is, in your 
uh, photographs, can you talk about the role of the stage? How do you consider it as an aspect of making? Sorry, can you repeat that again? Uh, the role of the stage. Uh, do you, how do you consider it as an aspect of making? Um, I will assume um, um, the, it's this uh, kind of sense of staging and also how uh, the figures and also objects are positioned uh, uh, as um, um, this kind of uh, are being staged and how they are central uh, or uh, presented in uh, some of the uh, photographs. Mm. I think, I mean, obviously most of my photographs are staged and um, then it, it comes from ideas and usually I have ideas for a very long time in the back of my mind until one day I feel like this is the right time, right moment to make it happen. So that means the idea is matured. And then I will set up, like, you know, set up the, um, the photo shoot. And before I involve Moro, I try to make it more ready, like the camera is ready, the clothes is ready, the, you know, the scene is ready. And then once everything is ready, then I involve him. I say, come in, I want you to do this. And then, and we're going to take the picture um, very quickly. And um, I think it's, it's very important for me to start with idea. Without an idea, I don't feel comfortable shooting because I, I feel without an idea, if I go shoot, it would just be um, wasting the time. Um, but that being said, um, when I was doing a photo shoot, more and more I realized when you have an idea, you set up everything and you shoot, you shouldn't be sticking to your script too much. You need to let things happen naturally during the photo shoot. And um, nowadays I really encourage Mara to improvise. Like he, he will have his own natural pose or gesture or facial expression, whatever. Like what he can bring into um, the photographs is more important that that's what make the photograph more lively than just having my own ideas. I think that's the combination of both that can make a photo successful. Yeah. And I guess to kind of expand a little bit on that question and then to, um, um, I, I was wondering if you might be able to share a little bit about sort of the, um, uh, the cords, um, the uh, the shutter that um, Mauro is holding in a lot of the images. Uh, and then because I uh, know that um, uh, he would uh, be controlling when to take the images, uh, uh, especially, for example, when you are outside um, in the image, uh, the hut by the pond, um, and then to fi find the best moment to document and then to to uh, photograph uh, yourselves. Uh, could you uh, perhaps elaborate a little bit on sort of how uh, you and Moro sort of negotiate this and then how you feel each other and then uh, in the sense of capturing uh, the images? Mm. For example, the, the image that you were talking about, that we are like uh, next to the pond, um, hugging each other naked. So I think for that is because we we happen to live near a forest and then we have an idea to, to go to the nature to take a picture. And I, I found this um, perfect pond to make a photograph. So I set up the camera and I would say, more take off your clothes and I take off my clothes and then we just quickly run to do it. Like maybe we do like once or twice. Uh, I'm not sure I'm answering the question though. How did you sort of find the, the perfect moment to, uh, to get that image? Oh, the perfect moment, the perfect moment that I was talking about is, um, it's not really about the, 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 the usual like perfect moment of catching a photograph for me, because it's stage photograph. The perfect moment is not that singular, um, but it's more about like, I have the access to the perfect location, perfect props, um, perfect lighting, 
um, in perfect um, body conditions, then it's the perfect moment for me. Um, yeah. Thank you. Um, we have a question from Yi Fei Zhang. Uh, the question is, you mentioned that you have been doing some research. If they are related to art and your future projects, would you be willing to share it with us? Thank you. Um, yeah, the research that, that I'm in, interested in is um, close to um, the Temple for Her project that I did for Flyweight. So that one was dedicated to the only Chinese female emperor um, in the history. And uh, I have an idea to make a cult for all the female leaders in different parts of the world um, in the history. And those women, they, they, they are very rare, but they are there. Like, um, and they have to be very powerful and also strong and at the same time maybe they possess some um kind of evil personality like maybe they did some really horrible things too so i think right now i'm doing like research on um different females um, like those and sometimes when, if you have any good example you can send it to my way because i've been asking people to suggest me and i was just looking up um their stories and thinking about how I can put them together. Yeah, so it, it's, it's um, project related. Uh, we have a question from Yi Fan Wang. Um, how has the project experimental relationship affected your relationship with Moro? Have Moro and you have, uh, have Moro and you always been on the same page during the work making? Uh, where do you see the uh, the quote unquote experimental within the relationship? Mm, I think um, the project's very interesting because in the beginning we started like in the early stage of our relationship and our relationship wasn't like um, right now, especially in the beginning at the time I was uh, already I already worked and I was a grad student and he was freshly out of high school and just an undergrad student. So our, the experience we have are very different and I, I was so much more mature than him. So at the time I was have so much power and that also shows in the project. In a project because I was doing and I was always over, like overpowering him, that kind of influenced our own relationship as, as well. And I think uh, by maybe after we moved to New York, and at the time, it started to become a period of time that we, and now I, I, I had a, like a negative thoughts about my past. That I was thinking, oh, I was just overpowering him too much. So that time, I think there was a time we we're trying to figure out whether this is the right direction to go. Should I always be so, controlling and I think the project in a way help us to look back on our relationship and to think too so and now I think um, our relationship is much more balanced I would say um, and I think um, you see in my photo it's more and more about collaborating um, so I think it's kind of like it's growing. It's like based on our relationship, but at the same time, it's a, something we can look at it and think about our relationship to reflect on what we have done and how we can go forward from there. Yeah. Thank you, Pixie. Uh, we have a question from uh, Juliet uh, Arnold. Do you think your work uh, resonates with society and feminist movements? Uh, do you consider your art as a quote unquote feminist? Mm, I think I get that question a lot and I understand how people would think that. And I uh, admit there's a lot of like common ideas between my work and the feminist, feminism, but I don't really think it is a feminist work because that's not 
how this project came out about. And um, when I was starting making this project, actually, I wasn't very aware about feminism at all because there's no um, educational knowledge about feminism where I grew up in China. So I think what I was doing was um, more about instinct, like what a woman's instinct is going to be um, living in this situation. Um, and obviously, it is something that resonates with a lot of feminists too. But I think um, eh, I don't really want to put it that way because at the same time, I think feminism is about like being equal <laughs> and in my photos, it's not always that way. So I think if you talk, say my work is a feminist work, then people might have, you know, a misunderstanding about feminist work. Like, like women need to be like overpowering men, like sometimes. I, I don't really don't think that is what it's about. So I want to kind of separate my work to feminist work um, for that reason. Um, we have a question from, sorry if I <laughs> mispronounce your name, uh, Pe Pega. Uh, Pixie, what do you think is worth our reflection during this pandemic? What questions do you think we should be asking ourselves? Mm, such a deep question. <laughs> um, yeah, I've been thinking about these days. It's more about like what we took for granted in the past and was that really how we're supposed to live? And, um, and what is more um, essential? Well, how how to be sustainable i mean these kind of thing and also you know question our behaviors and how we can um, survive um in a new environment yeah i guess that's uh, that's what i'm thinking right now um there was a question from Central uh, Basung. Uh, do you ever see having to do work without morals collaboration? Yeah, totally. <laughs> um, like the work I was uh, working on, uh, researching on female leaders in 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 the world. I think that will uh, that work is um, it's more. Um, about um, female experience and female leadership, then it does not involve moral. Yeah. So I try to do something by myself. <laughs> um, question from James uh, Nakagawa. Uh, I'm wondering what the story is behind the, the pink cord in the, in the background is. I think it's your. <laughs> is the object behind you, if you don't mind sharing, of course. That is Mauro's creation. Actually, Mauro is very creative and um, he made it. Um, I don't know, he, he, he just made it. I'm not sure, maybe I can use it in a photograph or something actually. On the, on the top left, you see? Um, like Mauro actually made many different paintings too so he is an artist actually um, we, um we have a um, uh, question here. Uh, in, in your talk, you mentioned a few uh, European paintings as an inspiration for a few of your compositions. Are there photographers who actually influence or still influence your work today? Oh yeah, um, um, my, my favorite photographer actually, I, I'm going to have a talk with her maybe next week. 
Um, she's a Finnish photographer. Her name is Anina Brothers. And she, she does a lot of self-portraits, like many self-portraits. And I love her work. I started love her work when I was just a student. And I think she still influenced me. Um, what I like about her work is, you know, when, it, when I see her work, I feel like I know this person. And this is the person I want to be friends with. <laughs> I don't know. It's, um, it's some, something that you feel connected to, um, to some photographer's work. And so, yeah, let me, maybe I can type it, her name here. If you're interested, in look her up. She's really great. And then, uh, yeah, that's her name. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's type two. Just one person. Let me um, put it to everyone. Okay. Um, we have a question from Han Shu Ma. Are you planning to go to Vancouver again? I really want to meet you in person. Oh, a fan. Thanks. I want uh -huh. to go to uh -huh. Vancouver. I've never been to Canada. I was so looking forward to it, you know. Um, but hopefully, hopefully we can we can go to Vancouver soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can speak just a little bit about that. So initially, uh, we were to have Pixie in Vancouver and then Center A uh, in early April. Uh, however, due to the very obvious reasons, uh, we cannot do that. But um, uh, the show actually has been installed and in, at our physical location. So hopefully, um, in uh, the near future, we'll be able to reopen uh, and uh, welcome uh, visitors to see the show. Um, the next question is from uh, Alex Wong. Do you feel like your photography uh, helps you in completion of you in certain missing elements in real life or your life take better controls in contribution more towards great photography? Hmm. I think photography, um, for me, especially in the beginning, it's a, a tool for me to explore myself. Um, it's almost like, a, um, like self therapy kind of thing, like using photographs to find out who, who I really am and uh, what I really like. Um, so in a way it's, um, it's a, it's something that I would say, yeah, completes me in a way. I guess also a question uh, could be uh, also about, for example, if you might have seen some of the uh, things that um, you, you'll be only, uh, could only be achieved through uh, your work uh, that are not necessarily uh, uh, apparent or existing in your uh, real life and how uh, perhaps that relationship could be uh, negotiated uh, through uh, your own living experience, uh, experience and also um, uh, uh, through your practice. Oh yeah, yeah, I think um, totally. For, for me, a lot of my photographs, they are not possible in real life. Like so many photographs that I have that's impossible for you to do to your partner in real life. But there is always this desire to do it. Um, so the photograph helped me to realize it and also have it as an image uh, for myself. So it is um, in a way to, to realize something that is otherwise impossible in real life because it's, um, um, fantasy. I don't know, it's, it's more about like uh, fulfilling your desire in an artistic way. Um, the next question is from uh, Nawa uh, Tsuomo. Uh, the question is, I think it's sort of uh, relevant to uh, a previous, previous question. Um, 
it, which is uh, revisiting your photographer uh, uh, photographs in the current climate with COVID-19, I can't help but think about the lives of people in similar relationships. Can you talk more about your work in relation to our current state of social isolation? Do you see your past work uh, differently? Yeah, I think so. I think it's so strange um, because most of my photographs, they are indoor, like uh, just two person, which is like what almost many people are living right now. Like every day your life is just two person in a room. And that's kind of really weird because I think my photo could be so boring right now because right now all I want to see is nature and outdoor. <laughs> but um, it's um, surreal to to think like right now, like uh, what you have is just same as my image that just two person in a room. And um, I think it's really important if you're locked in with somebody, and then hopefully somebody will be very fun to live with this. Um, yeah. Um, uh, question from uh, uh, Anya. There are some spots on your uh, photographs that are uh, unusually in or out of focus. Uh, was it intentional? If so, what was your motivation behind it? Some spots out of focus. Uh, un unusually in or out of focus. Uh, was it intentional? Um, if so, what was your motivation behind it? I think sometimes it can be a mistake because I do have like one or two photographs that I set up that was out of focus. Maybe that's what you're talking about. I guess uh, in a way it could be, uh, it, it, this could, it could be relevant to, uh, related to this more, uh, sometimes more profoundive and uh, spontaneous kind of aspect of, uh, 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 Pixie's photographs, and um, uh, I do think that um, uh, the uh, while uh, nowadays my um, the the, uh, the reality is that uh, there are a lot of more um, uh, technical uh, kind of um, um, expectations, and also um, how uh, sort of technology really uh, kind of uh, changing kind of the entire discourse. Um, and um, so uh, some of the works uh, that might seem uh, a, a little bit uh, more um, uh, spontaneous and how that, uh, how, how those work are really uh, speaking to that very uh, specific and particular moment uh, when, when the work is uh, composed. Uh, I don't know if that's perhaps what Pixie would, uh, uh, would agree with. Yeah, I mean, I mean, occasionally I do have those mistakes in my photographs because I'm doing self-portrait and a lot of time you're just guessing. And um, I think I didn't see the mistake as um, something too negative because what I, what I think more important is the idea of the image. So sometimes if I really like the idea of the image, even though there's little mistake like out of focus in the photograph, I still put it there. Yeah. Uh, and question from Jilly. Do you plan the days you are going to shoot or you work with an impulse? Is it hard to put yourself in front of the camera or prepare for it? You mean right now? Um, I think that it, it, it's more like a general, in the general sense. And is it uh, perhaps to prepare when you're going from the camera and then how, um, how uh, this kind of like, um, uh, when you have an idea and you want to shoot it right away, or do you, uh, there is a certain uh, time you are taking to really present yourself in front of the camera? Mm, I, I think I, I really prepare myself in front of the camera. It's not really preparing myself, it's preparing my idea. Because when I have idea, it's um, usually very vague, like one word or like a one like a 
very blurry image that I have and I needed to find time to find the right things that I need for a photo shoot. So it usually takes a long time and sometimes you know, I just don't feel like, you know, maybe we are not in the mood to take photographs, which is very important. Um, so yeah, I think usually to prepare me for a photo shoot actually takes much, much longer time than having an idea. Thank you. Um, so Juan Carlos uh, also has a question that I, I'm always, I'm also very curious uh, to ask. Uh, has your understanding of intimacy evolved since you started doing your projects? Uh, in which ways? Mm, I think so. I think I learned so much, so many things about uh, relationship and intimacy and how to um, stay in a relationship and uh, keep it healthy and happy. And um, I think maybe when you see my photograph, you see one way. It's all about like, like what I want, what I desire. But on the other hand, I think to maintain a relationship that's um, healthy, you need to do a lot of sacrifice as well. And um, also you need to do something in return for the other person. Like what I do like in band as well. Mm. And I think, I don't know, intimacy, it's really about, but I do believe like the more things you collaborate and do together with a partner is good for a relationship. It builds up the, the trust and uh, also builds up the um, how, just how, how easy you guys are together, like how, how much you can understand each other. Um, through collaboration. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we have uh, one more question here. Uh, the question from Song Xing. Uh, in some of your work, when you were uh, in the same frame, when you were in the same frame, have you considered asking another photographer to replace um, the remote uh, control uh, slash shutter? Sh like the only photograph that I showed you like was taken by a third person was when we are outdoor uh, and it's called playground and um, and it was taken by his mom the reason I asked her to do it because the it's too far away from the camera it's longer than my cable release then I have to ask mom to do it for us usually it's just us I cannot think about like having another person in a photo shoot that would be <laughs> to um, I just cannot let that happen because it's uh, such an intimate setup of two of us and if I have another person to take the picture I don't know how we can perform well in, in front of a camera yeah um people are sharing their uh, same lot of things and thank you for being here. Um, I, I personally also have a question is uh, really about, um, so uh, as an artist who um, primarily works with uh, photography and is kind of performing uh, with cameras, uh, how do you see yourself um, adapting your work uh, uh, your physical work into a gallery space and uh, is there any um, a particular uh, a vision for you when your work is presented in a, uh, in a public, in a, in a gallery space, a setting? Mm, I think that's a curator's job. <laughs> As, actually, um, um, yes. When I have a show, uh, if there's a curator and I, I usually let the curator do um, the presentation um, and choose images because I think if I do it myself that it would lose the meaning and uh, you know because I know my work so well in my own way and it's too objective and I, I just cannot see how to present it 
in another way. And so our curators, you know, they are more like um, they give an equal attention to each work than their choice of images and um, way of presentation will be much better than my own, mm, I think. Sounds great. <laughs> um, does anybody um, else has any have any questions? Um, uh, Hannah, oh, Hannah, you want to say something? I have a fun, like a fun question. Pixie, what's your star sign? What's my what? Your zodiac sign. Oh, can you guess? <laughs> are you, are you a Cancer? No, uh, I'm Sagittarius. Sagittarius, okay. Cool. And both, both Maura and I are Sagittarius. Nice. Yeah. I was just wondering, it was like a fun question. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, it seems that uh, that would, were all the questions that we had uh, for right now. Um, so I guess this would be a good time to, uh, to end. And I do want to thank everyone again for joining us. Um, uh, and I mean, all of you are in different time zones, uh, as I understand it. And um, I uh, do want to extend my uh, invitation uh, to all of you to participate, uh, to, to uh, visit the exhibition online, uh, which is at uh, centerA.org um, slash pixie dash Liao dash online uh, to see more of their works. And uh, um, for the show to be, uh, a bit more interactive as well. Uh, Pixie is currently taking over uh, Insta uh, Century's Instagram uh, and uh, posts uh, every other day about her works. And then there are some uh, stories uh, sometimes go along with the uh, works as well. Uh, on top of that, uh, uh, we also uh, created uh, an Instagram uh, story um, series called Quarantine Stories, uh, which is uh, currently highlighted on our account, Century A. Um, underline A. Um, so um, if you, uh, if anyone has any questions or um, any, um, I just want to chat uh, in this time of isolation, we, uh, Hannah and I will always be here. And if you have any questions uh, to Pixie, please also get in touch with us. Um, our email is info at centerA.org. Um, Thank you so much. Thank you and, so much. Um, I will see everybody sometime soon. Yeah, thank, thank you. you for spending time with us. Thank you. It's so great to see everyone. Beautiful faces. Yeah. Bye. Bye, 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 Bye. Bye. Thank you.